then she receives a terrible letter. Her parents have passed away in mysterious circumstances. Determined to uncover the truth, she sets sail for the last port of call, Cairo, bringing in her sketch pads and an ancient ring that her father sent to her for safekeeping. But upon her arrival in Egypt, the ring flares with ancient magic and Inez is thrust into a treacherous game that could threaten her life and into the path of her new guardian's infuri infuriatingly handsome assistant, who seems determined to thwart her at every turn. And it says, the mummy meets death on the Nile in this lush historical fantasy set in the 19th century Egypt, filled with adventure, arrivals to lovers' romance and a dangerous race. So, this is the first book. Like, again, this probably wouldn't be one that I would, like, run to pick up. But we will see. Hopefully, I am pleasantly surprised by, by this. So, next... I wonder if the next one will be like 
pretty sure. I'm pretty sure this is a very new one. Oh no, I don't know. Let me go and find out. Okay, actually, this isn't this isn't a very new edition. This is a Waterstones exclusive edition, which again, like I remember pre-ordering this last year, like really early, and then it came, and I haven't read it so. This is Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong and I know this is very popular, she's a very popular author, I haven't read anything from her, but this is the book, again it's so, it's such a pretty edition. rebuild the kingdom. Oh, it's also signed. I got a signed copy of it. And it says, every year thousands flock to San Er, the dangerously dense capital twin cities of the kingdom of Dalin, where the palace hosts a set of deadly games. I love a book which has deadly games. <laughs> Those confident in their ability to jump between bodies can enter a fight to the death for the chance to win unimaginable riches. Princess Kala Dualimi has been in hiding for five years, ever since she murdered her parents to free the people of Tallinn from her tyrannical family. Only one person stands in her way of finishing the job, her reclusive uncle King Kaza. However, she knows he always greets the victor of the games. If she wins, she will finally get the chance to kill him. Enter Anton Makusa, whose childhood love has lain in a coma since they were both ousted from the palace. He's deep in debt trying to keep her alive, which means his last chance at saving her is entering the games and winning. When Anton proposes an unexpected alliance with Gala, they quickly find their partnership spiralling into something all-consuming. Before the games close, Gala must decide what she's playing for. Her love or her kingdom, for no matter what, any one of them can walk out alive. Okay, that sounds like up my street. I love, like, I loved the Hunger Games, and I loved, um, oh my god, what's it called? The Serpent and the Wings of Night. Like that vampire duology that was like one of my favourite reads of last year. So this does sound really good. So hopefully it will like live up to that. So that is three out of the six we chose. So let's see what's next. Are we gonna have a paperback at all? Salve. 
Operation Heights in the last place you'll ever want to look. The narrator must exact revenge upon Evie. Her best friend and fellow model kidnap Manus, her two-timing ex-boyfriend, and hit the road with Brandy in search of a brand new past, present and future. Yeah, okay, this sounds like... This sounds like a wild ride. Definitely different to like the other three books that I have passed, uh, picked so far. This is more of like a thriller. It sounds like, which will be a nice little change from the others. Hopefully it is like as crazy as it sounds. It's also quite short, which is nice. He likes like to have like the narrator just in here as like the main the main person. So cool. Invisible and Monsters is a book number four. Okay, let's pick book five. This is fun.
so it says. Hunter S. Thompson is driving to Las Vegas with his attorney, the Simone, to find the dark side of the American dream. Roaring down the desert highway from Los Angeles, they realise that only, there's only one way to go about such a perilous task, task getting very, very twisted. Armed with a drug arsenal of stupendous proportions, the duo engage in a manic, surreal tour of the sleaze capital of the world. Their perilous, chemically enhanced confrontation with the casino operators, police officers, and assorted middle Americans have a hallucinated story, humour and nightmare terror. Ritualistly funny, daringly original and dead serious at its core. Fear and loathing in Las Vegas is a classic statement on the collapsed dream of the American 60s. Like I haven't actually even seen the film. So it will be good to see what it's all about. Again this is like one that I wouldn't have necessarily picked up probably like six seven years ago I would have picked this up but now like my kind of like reading tastes have changed so it'll be interesting to go out of my comfort zone again and dive into some Those are all the books that we've picked today that is on my spring DBR. I am a little nervous and apprehensive about some of them but I'm also like excited about some of them so I think it's like a good mix, it's a good mix. So I will have to obviously, they'll be in my reading wrap ups at the end of each month, whichever month I read them in so I'll be able to like review them then and tell you what I think about them. So yeah, thank you for joining me today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Let me know what 